name is Reba Howard. I am a postdoctoral fellow in the neurobiology department at UT Austin. I have been for almost four years. I study um, how alcohol and other drugs affect electrical signaling in the brain. My undergraduate degree was in chemistry. I went, actually got a Bachelor of Arts in chemistry at a small liberal arts college, um, Pomona College in Southern California. They only offered Bachelor of Arts degrees because it's a liberal arts college. Um, and so the, the focus of the school was really to pr try to provide a really well-rounded education. And um, there's lots of distribution requirements. And I, was, I also minored in dance and did a, spent a lot of time doing music um, and studying religious studies. I did a semester abroad in India studying folk dance and realized coming back from it that I was really passionate about I really, what, the, what I missed the most coming back from India was, was lab work and so I ended up majoring in chemistry um, and then moving on to a PhD in, in chemical biology. So is a postdoc required in my field? It pretty much absolutely is in all of the life sciences fields nowadays. There's some opportunities to move directly into an industry job if you're not interested in going into academia. Um, I personally knew even when I was in graduate school that I wanted to go work at probably more like a small college as opposed to a big research university. But these days, even for small college jobs, um, the advice I got early on was that the most important thing was your research and that doing a postdoc is really critical. And I'd say that having now wrapping up my postdoc, it's I really appreciate it because in, in retrospect, I was I've learned a lot as a postdoc. You're you know a lot of technical skills coming out of a PhD, um, but you learn so much, of, or at least I have learned so much about working with students and how to work in a group and how to manage a group of people, um, either indirectly as a postdoc um, or in sort of with increasing independence during your postdoc. That I think that's really been the critical experience I've gained as a postdoc compared to um, straight out of a doctoral degree. Early on in graduate school, I read a couple papers by Adrian Harris, who is the faculty member that I've been working with here. And it was one of those really crystallizing moments where reading his work helped me tie together. I've been studying biochemistry as a doctoral student, but I was really interested in the way drugs and alcohol and neurochemicals affected just our human experience. Being in a college setting, I was very involved in residence hall life. There were a few kind of uh, sort of dramatic experiences that happened among some of my residents that really impressed upon me how critical this issue of, of drug use and abuse in society is and how problematic it is that we have a very poor understanding of it. And reading some of Adrian Harris's papers was part of what really made me connect what I was studying in the classroom to this problem I was really interested in in society. And so by the time I was finishing out my doctoral degree, um, one of the first people I contacted to see if he would take me as a postdoc was, was Adrian Harris, um, just because it was uh, I knew that that was the kind of work I wanted to pursue and I felt like his approach to science um, was something that, that was pretty creative and, and was really tying together the things that I was interested in. So I knew coming into my postdoc, first of all, that I wanted to, I needed to develop research independence, that I needed to expand some of my technical skills. Um, and to be able to address problems a little bit more independently than I'd had the opportunity to do as a graduate student. Um, but also that I wanted to get more experience working with students, and particularly I was really interested in, in eventually ending up at a liberal arts college setting, um, which was what my experience had been as an undergraduate, and I really believe in that model of, of teaching students. I think it's not the right fit for everyone, but it's, it's something that really worked well for me. As a doctoral student, I was at the University of California, San Francisco, which is a medical school, and doesn't have any undergraduates. So as a doctoral student, I never had the opportunity to work with undergrads um, to TA any courses like you would in a lot of graduate programs. And so I knew I wanted to go to an institution where I would have more teaching opportunities and opportunities to work with undergraduates and make sure that that was the path um, that I would be on and to make sure I was prepared to follow that path. I'd say I'm equally interested in the research and the teaching, and I think that the really exciting part of science is when those two things come together, and being able to be involved in teaching and research, and working with students in the lab, you're teaching and you're doing research, and the students are doing research, and they're teaching you, and, and that intersection is what I find really exciting. Um, and so I, you know, 
so yeah, I, I knew I didn't want to go to a community college setting or to a place where I would only be doing teaching. I wanted to go somewhere where I could also have a research group. Um, but my, um, my biggest interest is in working with undergraduates and really incorporating that teaching experience into research and vice versa. I've had an incredible opportunity here at UT to work with the student population and that's absolutely the, the primary thing that's been valuable here is UT has a great group of undergraduates, it's a very diverse population of undergraduates um, and I was pretty fortunate to work in a lab where I made it very clear to my postdoc advisor right at the beginning that this was what I was interested in, was learning how to, to run a research group and specifically to work with undergraduates and so he allowed me to retire a bunch of undergrads and kind of run my own little group within, within the uh, research lab and so learning to work with them and, and really watching those students develop as scientists over the time that I've been here has been incredibly rewarding and also really um, and also a really um, valuable learning experience about how to get a student who's just learned how to use a pipette up to being able to collect data within about a semester um, and to really contribute their own ideas within about a year and I think that's um, that's definitely what I've what I've gotten the most out of um, I'd also say that you know UT is a really big place and there that's there's advantages and disadvantages of that. Um, and the real advantage of it has been that there are a ton of resources here. And currently the postdoc resources are kind of nascent. They're a little bit young. Um, but if you reach out for it here, I found that there are there's a lot going on and there's somebody out there who's also interested in what you're interested in. And hopefully you'll even be able, and, and I've also been able to find um, a number of faculty members and administrators who've been um, interested in helping uh, me accomplish what I wanted to do, both in terms of teaching and in terms of, of helping to build a community of postdoctoral researchers um, and related scientists um, and other scholars. Absolutely the diversity of the student body that I've had a chance to work with here and the large population of faculty here um, that are really intensely involved in research. I've, um, when I did eventually go on the job market applying for faculty positions, um, I already found I had a network of faculty mentors, people that I had participated in journal clubs with or had conversations with in the halls or, or um, had other kind of interactions over the years that were incredibly helpful in coming and watching my practice talks, in helping me prepare a reading through my application materials, and providing their own experience um, to help me get onto that next stage. I think that um, the faculty here, at least um, most of the ones I've interacted with, are uh, very excited, not just willing, but, but enthusiastic about training that next generation of, of faculty and, and helping you get onto that next stage of your career, and so I've been really um, appreciative of, of that resource here at UT. When I first came here, the postdoc resources were just getting off the ground, um, but over the years it's been very exciting to see that grow into a much uh, more vibrant program and there's um, just an increasing amount of support from the administration to recognize the research uh, resources that postdocs bring into the university, to recognize the teaching that postdocs participate in, um, and to help out to strengthen the postdoc experience overall. And so I think it's been very exciting to be part of that process um, while I've been here. Um, and I hope that that will continue to grow in the next few years. So what's next for me? I'll be moving on to a faculty position. I'll be an assistant professor at Skidmore College in Saratoga Springs, New York. It's a small liberal arts college of about 2,500 students, all undergraduate. Um, they're, again, in the theme of um, things that are growing. Um, it's, it's traditionally been a liberal arts college with a focus on the fine arts, but they are growing their research program and very engaged in hiring new young faculty who are interested in, in combining a strong research effort along with their teaching. And so that's a very good fit for my interests. <laughs>